we think we've reached somewhere around the halfway mark. It has just been such a tough first half. It is a challenge after all. It's not going to be easy. This is why it is called Britain's... What is it called? But absolutely everywhere. So good. This is what we've woke up to. That is some serious midges. It literally looks like hair. It's just falling off the side of the tent. What's up guys, it's Eddie Fitz. It's day 10 of the Cape Raft Trail. We got rid of some of the camera gear. Bag's feeling super light. For breakfast today, we've had scones and some shortbread. Great start to the day. Um, sun again is absolutely glorious. Hopefully it stays this way. Top up that tan. We're averaging to do 11 and a half miles each day. That means that we'll stop in 10 days time, we'll get to Cape Wrath. Obviously if we do any better, then fantastic, we'll finish in a little less days. Hopefully if we can get 11 and a half miles done today, that would be fantastic because we had to make sure that we caught the post office at nine o'clock this morning. But that's the stuff sent home and we're good to go. It has just been such a tough first half. Um, from proper rainy, cold, freezing weather to scorching sunshine where you're just constantly sweating water out. But it's been a good first half of the journey. We're looking forward to the next half. Hopefully it's a little bit easier on us, but can never take it for granted, so let's just see how it goes. We're just heading up to Beelant and Cross. The past three days have obviously been glorious sunshine, which for this day, it's actually worked in our favour. Um, as you can see, it's really, really marshy um, down there. And normally this would be quite a hard climb um, through really marshy, boggy land and making it really difficult to navigate coming up. But because the day, you can see the sky is just so bright. Um, the sun is shining made it really dry and easy to come up. There's been small little cairns which has made it easy to, to navigate and find where we're going. We've just passed Loch Inid. This place is honestly so cool. We've got such good little camp spots. We're gutted that we're going to try and push on another little bit down the river. Um, we're hoping to continue on this stretch, go further up. I would recommend though, if you are planning your route or you get to this point, stop, take it in. As you can see, there are some cracking little spots here that you can pitch your tent. You could have your own little private beach. Um, beautiful, absolutely incredible, but we are continuing on, so just have to see where we get to tonight. We're just trying to push on as much as possible um, in this second stage. The more that we can push each day, um, then it means that we know that we're going to finish the walk. That's the constant worry that you have in your head. Obviously, today has been a fantastic day, and so has the past three days. Um, you don't always get days like this, so sometimes it's great to stop and take it in um, and have like a little campsite and you know chill, maybe stop there, have some extra miles the next day. But it's actually then that whole idea of like the mileage. Are you going to have enough miles to get to the end? Um, have you got enough days to complete it? So we just want to make sure that we can definitely complete the walk. So we're going to push on tonight and see where we get to. We'll finish for day 10. As you can see, the sun is setting, but the hardest thing is the midges are out there and I ain't been out there to try and get a photo because it's crazy. So we're finished for day 10, it was such a good day, good sunshine, the path was pretty good, it was really dry instead of boggy for a change, um, today was meant to be a tough day, 
across sloggy conditions. Um, but just because it has been dry for the past three days, it helped us get past and through pretty quickly, um, which is good. We're just in line with Cheneval Boffy, um, just sort of camped up past the river. Obviously the, the river and the lock, they were two cracking spots to, to camp, but we kind of camped further up thinking that the higher we would be, we would then be able to catch the sunset. You know, as you can see, the light's just sort of starting to fade. The sky is completely orange, but we're just again peeking through, just watching the sunset through the tent um, and taking it in as much as we can. The midges are just crazy out there, so to go and risk it is probably not the best thing to do. But the good thing is, instead of counting upper days, we are now starting to count down. Um, obviously, either today or yesterday, we somewhat passed halfway. Um, so we're taking that as a positive and it's sort of built us up um, to move forward and push on to the end. So that's us for day 10. C for day 11. What's up guys? It's Eddie Fitz. It's day 11 of the Cape Raft Trail. It looks like our good weather's come to an end. Um, we're back in rainy weather, so I'm gonna start off today by putting the camera away and just try to charge on. Hopefully it dries up a little bit later and I can get the camera back out. The rain still hasn't taken the midges away, as you can see. Um, it's still really crazy, but we've just had breakfast and we're ready to go. We're hoping to get to Invaleo today, um, and then that takes us to Ullapool, and then we start again from Ullapool all the way along to Oiko Bridge. So hopefully we get to Ullapool today, might get a wee fish and chips at the end of the day, which would be fantastic. So let's see how we get on. So as you can see, the weather has changed again. Just typical Scotland that goes from pouring rain this morning to nice glorious sunshine again today. Um, we're just on the final ascent to Invaleo. We're just going to be heading up this hill here. After descending into Invaleo, there's a phone box that you can phone and get a taxi across to Ullapool. Um, and then this means that you can take the Ullapool route to Oiko Bridge rather than Invaleo to Oiko Bridge. Um, this just allows you to stock up, maybe even stop for fish and chips or go to the restaurant, accommodation. It doesn't really change the mileage at all, but it just means that you can pass through a town and that's what we're going to try and do. Obviously we don't know with the situation of Covid and stuff if the taxis will even be running, but hopefully they are and we can get a wee fish and chips because that would just top off today. You just can't quite credit how beautiful this view is in the sunshine. Absolutely incredible. We're so lucky to have it so clear, so sunny and yet so spectacular. We're just heading to Vallejo in the descent now. Just coming down through the two locks. The two locks were absolutely cracking. I think if you got a good day, it'd be amazing to just come up here for a day trip and camp. Just take all the views of the mountains around you. You've got a whole 360 vista. It's just beautiful. Especially in weather like this, you just kind of quite credit how amazing the weather is and just how cracking it would be to have these kind of views all the time. It'd be amazing. We made it to the phone box, as you can see, but we had signal, which was good, so we just used our own phone. Phone to Liverpool, the taxi is coming. Now we just need to hope for the fish and chip shop to be open, and we're rocking today. So, once we get to Liverpool, we're gonna have some fish and chips, get some dinner, and then we're gonna walk a little bit along, see how far we get for the night, and then pitch the tent, camp up. It's time to get some fish and chips. Woohoo! This is the best feeling ever. And look at this view. So good. So we made it to Liverpool. We got there. Um, after we got to Invaleo, we phoned Ewan's taxis. Um, and we asked the woman if she could take us to the closest fish and chip stop in Ullapool and damn was it the best fish and chips I've ever had, it was it's so good but we've got another couple of miles to get to a camp spot and I severely think I'm going to be sick I'm that full but it's going, it, it'll burn off pretty fast but oh, fish and chips was so good 
so we're now just heading off from here. I've got a couple of miles to go. Need to burn off that that chippy pretty fast. Um, stomach is so full, but we just need to push on and get to the the camp spot. This view. So good, we even saw the Calmac ferry come in, but it's time to leave here and move on up. So that's us done for day 11. We got to Illapool, we got our fish and chips, and we then came along and were camping by Loch Achoo, or Ahul, Achoo, however it is. Um, pretty nice loch. So we are just camped next to it, um, just off the road. Good little path along tomorrow, so probably around 17 miles left to go on that track. Hopefully, we'll just go for it and we'll do the whole 17 miles and get ourselves to Oiko Bridge. That that's the ideal situation. We're going to try and push ourselves through this because um, it should be a fairly straightforward um, level route. So um, that will take us up to Knockdamp, and then we'll kind of like go from there, which takes us through to Oiko Bridge. So uh, today we decided to go to Ullapool, that was always going to be the plan, um, obviously if Covid let it and we were able to get a taxi and stuff, we were always going to go to Ullapool and stop by, it just meant that we could get some food, um, some goodies and also get a fish supper, you know, why not stop and get a fish supper halfway through, just after halfway, um, and then it means that you're ready and set for the last little part of the journey. Um, to push you through to Cape Wrath, so that was always the plan um, and lucky enough we were able to get the taxi there and um, get through to the fish and chip shop which was so good because the weather was cracking so we just stopped by the water took it all in, you know the Calmac ferry was came in at the same time so we just sat there, watched that um, and had our food and then um, pushed on the track so camped by the lock for tonight, let's see how we get on tomorrow but for tonight that's us. What's up guys, Zeddy Fitz. It's day 12 of the Cape Raft Trail. We're just coming along the lock that we camped at um, and heading all the way along this. So we're on track for quite a bit. Um, I think around 17 miles we've got today to get to Oiko Bridge, but it's fairly steady, quite flat, and a 4 before track. So hopefully we squish that part. Um, it'll just be the matter of how our heels and ankles are doing on the sort of flatter ground but hopefully we can push on a little bit today um, and then that means another stage done and then it'll be four stages left until we get to Cape Raft so it's getting closer and closer to the end point but you can never speak too soon because um, you never know what lies ahead so just taking it in as we go looks like it's going to be another cracking little day today um, Sun hasn't come up yet, but it looks like it's gonna hopefully break and we'll get some sunshine again. So, fingers crossed for another dry day. Not long left, not damp. Um, we just sort of had some lunch outside the boffy, and as we were sitting having lunch, a jet came flying right over the top of our head. It was awesome to just hear the sort of like thunder rumble like in your stomach and your chest. It was crazy just how low it was. It's always awesome when that happens and you just like you're in the right place at the right time just to capture it. We've done around nine miles. Um, as you can see path's pretty good, it's a fairly good path all the way which just makes it a little bit easier to plod on so aiming for 17 miles to get us to Oiko Bridge hopefully if we get to Oiko Bridge we'll then stop there and then we're kind of hoping it will take then four nights to get to Cape Wrath but who knows, nobody knows how long it might take Again, never thought I would say this, but we're running out of sun cream. <laughs> this is day five, five or six of the sunshine. 
um, and it's just so crazy hot again today but well getting a good wee tan at least um, but it's just so energy zapping and you need to just make sure you keep drinking plenty of water um, and just getting a lot of snacks so we've got loads of bags of sweets to keep says oh my shoulder we've got loads of bags of oh, we made it past Oiko Bridge. The camp spots were pretty poor um, after we got to Oiko Bridge. So we had to push on a little bit, um, which then pushed us through to around 21 miles today. Uh, so our legs are sore, our ankles are really sore. Um, but we're here, we're in a little camp spot down by the river. Midges again, out in force. We thought we were gonna get away from them tonight. We thought there was a bit of a breeze that was gonna take them away, but the breeze is long gone and the midges are out, so inside the tent we are. But the good thing is we obviously pushed on a little bit further today, so that's another stage of the book done. So tomorrow we're heading to the Dam, we're going to see how far we get. Um, obviously we have such a big day today, we might sort of aim for a bit of a shorter day. Um, but we'll see how we are, you know, everything can change tomorrow, we might feel a little bit better, a little bit more fresh. Uh, tomorrow the weather's meant to be good again so hopefully it stays that way um, because it's always a lot better when you're walking in the dry weather and it just helps you push on a little bit further and keep the morale and spirits up so let's keep our fingers crossed for that um, but that's us for tonight so gonna head off to bed early and try and get some good sleep and ready for tomorrow so that we're prepared and set to go good night